सी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मैंने स्टार्टेड फ्लावर्स और जब मेरी शादी की बात हो रही थी एंड यू नो माय टू बी फादर इन लो वाज टोल्ड दैट ही इज अ फ्लावर बिजनेस ही प्रोबेबली थॉट दैट ही इज सेलिंग सम यू नो मंदिर के बाहर कोई वो फूल बेचता होगा काइंड यू नो सो सो फ्लावर्स वर वर लुक्ड एट यू नो फ्रॉम दैट पर्सपेक्टिव एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम नाउ ब्रिंगिंग देम टू दोस रिस्पेक्टिव फ्लावर बुटीक्स एंड मल्टीप्लाइंग इट and being a unorganized industry i think it was um, it was extremely challenging we had some very very tough times we have seen all the hardship a businessman can go through whether it's depression whether it's debt whether it is you know backstabbing whether you know all kind of uh, uh, all kind of failures and hardships so i always say that you know um, i've been to a school called struggle which is which has graduated me to be a better businessman better florist and that education is helping me even today hi everyone today we have with us vikas gudgutia founder and md fern saint petal uh, welcome to the show vikas thank you for having me vikas i would like to start our conversation from your background like you were the first generation businessman right and uh, ferns and petal is now a brand hum sab ne ferns and petal ka naam suna hai experience bhi kiya hai product purchase karne ka online and offline both so tell us about your background about the journey and about the time jab aapne decide kiya that you want to become an entrepreneur I'm basically born and brought up in Bihar, which is Jharkhand now, and uh, I had my initial studies there. You know, it was a joint family setup, and then uh, we didn't have college in Bihar where I was staying. I was born, so I moved to Kolkata for my college, and I was staying with my uncle, and uh, I was pursuing my studies. And um, my uncle had a flower shop, so I used to go once in a while to help him in the shop. So that was my first interaction with flowers, you know, in terms of um, um, their names, prices, how they are sold, and all that. And post my studies, uh, I had to look for an opportunity to start my career. So I was trying with many ideas, but one thing was very clear that. i wanted to be my own boss i didn't want to work under anybody you know so i wanted to be an entrepreneur so that was definitely the driving force and destiny had to be you know this way that uh, i came to delhi you know to be with my girlfriend on a birthday and uh, that's where i you know ordered flowers for her and the experience was so bad and being a florist myself to a certain extent in kolkata i knew what's good and bad is so that bad delivery of flowers was the mother of ferns and petals that's when the ferns and petals idea came in and i did some kind of a survey of the city and and try try to find out you know what's happening how is it happening and then post that you know i chose this name and we started in delhi in 1994 So you started Ferns and Petal before uh, you got married, or two years prior to my getting married. Okay, okay. But uh, your wife is part of your business, like she is the key. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. She is the same girl is still my wife, and uh, she used to contribute personally, you know, in the initial stages. Now she is doing uh, other things. You know, she has a couple of her own channels where she does. Uh, women empowerment and she she is also a designer so she design sort of flower arrangements and everything under a brand called fn flexib by fn so she is an entrepreneur in herself yes mm. the creative side helped you uh, in your business yeah 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 it's like a perfect fit for for the business yeah right? yeah work like a very good combination and vikas when someone decides that he wants to become an entrepreneur and a time when he is very certain about the idea कि मेरे को ये बिजनेस करना है ठीक है देर इज अ वेरी स्मॉल जर्नी इन बिटवीन आई वॉन्ट टू बिकम एन ऑन्टरप्रिन और आई वॉन्ट टू डू दिसन बिजनेस टेल एस अबाउट दैट जर्नी आपने कैसे डिसाइड किया कि फर्न एंड पेटल ही वो बिजनेस है जिसमें आपको आगे जाना है the moment you think of an idea and you want to pursue that particular idea as your career option the first thing comes to your mind is investment where get the money from you know how do i start this business and uh, money is very important so one has to source that money from some source or the other 
sometimes can be support you sometimes you have somebody who probably like you and then invest in you sometimes you have a friend who helps you a lending hand so in my case uh, it was a friend who liked the idea and, and he became my partner so that helped me start my first outlet so uh, that was his money my hard work or my creative bit and we started this journey and there are a lot of things i used to see in flower business in kolkata in delhi everywhere as an entrepreneur or as somebody who is young and getting into a new business the idea was to rewrite the whole working of a florist as a business you know mm. so do something which has not been done people didn't used to trust florist because florist normally if you tell them to send somebody something they'll send you old flowers so that they can get rid of their old flowers trust deficit was there then the quality of flowers how you keep them how do the flowers last longer how do you get into first name basis with your clients so that you know that there is some kind of uh, connectivity so all that worked for me all that worked for me in the sense that they found that it is not a roadside florist is educated you know from a good family who who talks sense and mm-hmm. is reliable mm-hmm. So, 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 but it so, might be a very difficult decision for you because you were educated and it could be another another business. But starting a flower, it, it was like initial. आपको ऐसा ही sound हुआ होगा when you shared this news with your family that you are starting a flower business. So it it must be a difficult journey for you taking that idea. Uh, for uh, I was educated, but I was not overly educated. I was not some kind of an MBA or a doctor. who was uh, changing my career i was a simple graduate which is not education which is probably a basic we all do in our lives irrespective of whatever we do so so i guess uh, education was not a not something which was holding me back or was some kind of a guilt in me that you know what am i doing but yes that definitely made me stand apart from the rest of the florist because florist business is normally a business which is run by roadside you know uh, not so educated people you know who probably do it for their living but are not uh, doing it technically right the way it should be so mm-hmm. what fnp did was we brought the technically right thing into the picture and mm-hmm. we persisted and we kept doing the same thing over and over again kept improving and as you start uh, walking the path you know you have different diversions you have uh, opportunities you have milestones you have you know situations where you don't know where to go there are tough times so we went through that whole journey of all kind of weather but one determination which kept us going was that the goal was very clear so when the goal is clear the destination is clear whatever happens in the journey is part of the journey but you don't deviate from your goal so mm-hmm. so the goal was to become the biggest florist in, in india because you see generally flower is not a organized business flower business mm-hmm. is normally done by individuals family husband wife you know fa- father daughter mother daughter mm-hmm. that's the way flower shops are run you do not even have one particular family who, who has more than two flower shops in this country and mm-hmm. for that reason anyway in the world you know normally it's a family run small business like a sabji ki dukan or paan ki dukan mm-hmm. kind of a so to take this to a level where you can have multiple shops you know and and brand that fly into a ferns and petals so branding is exercise and you know setting that system in order that you are able to run multiple outlets that was the agenda and i guess uh, that's when the franchising also become part of business uh, expansion you know in those days it was a new concept i'm talking about 98 99 that's where this franchising world magazine also started and mm-hmm. they kind of did a cover story on us and uh, we were the first, one of the first uh, companies in india who started franchising our brand so franchising helped us a lot we further fine tuned it and i think the whole journey is history now <laughs> yes and aapne kisi aur interview mein bhi bataya hai ki your uncle had this flower shop and he was not at all enjoying the business he was doing it out of obligation so it's very important that is the point when you enjoy the process you want to put more efforts you want to expand it and you want to do many things uh, about that same idea right so it it's not coming uh, out of an obligation right it's like you know i have done something which seems right till now but now if my son comes and join me he will probably take it to the next level it's a new yeah. generation new thought innovations i guess that keep, that keeps happening with every passing generation every passing time 
I took it from where my uncle uh, was working. Now my son will probably take it further from from where I I brought it. So it's an ongoing process. Because you opened in 1994, my first store opened here at South Delhi, mein, right? Yes. T- tell us about that time, uh, that initial one year. How was that one year? What things you pursued in that one year? Three things happened. First of all. it was a time i got to know delhi i had no idea it was my first time to delhi delhi again is a city which is very different from kolkata you know the, the the way you speak the way you do business and lot of other activities you know yes. there is no similarity so first year was to know delhi what i did didn't go down very well with lot of florists in the city second of all i made lot of enemies in our uh, flower fraternity and third thing uh, which happened was that it gave me a confidence as a young boy you know that you are doing something right and that's the way there's a reason all this is happening around you so keep doing so that confidence knowing delhi and having some enemies who who made me work harder was the first three, first year i guess i think uh, you you only mentioned ki uh, before uh, you started ferns and petal ye market bahut disorganized tha all the players were local only ferns and petal was yeah yeah brand. because in delhi you know whatever good markets we have gk khan market south x you know which which are so called post markets of south delhi they hmm. all had flourished on road side nobody had a proper air conditioned flower shop hmm. because they probably didn't know that flower can also be sold from a you know air condition boutique fnp was the first outlet in the city which was air conditioned and is in a post locality on our 100x entrepreneur podcast we were joined by no broker founder amit he also shared ki jab bhi aap kuch disorganized market mein kuch organize karna chahte ho to bahut sare aapke enemies ban jate hain there are people who don't like your idea <laughs> they don't want you to you know walk further so he was telling us that there were so many local brokers and they were not liking the fact that mm-hmm. amit was building something online and they were thinking that uh, amit's business will eat up their jobs right so they mm-hmm. started uh, getting very aggressive they used to you know destroy no brokers property yeah. and some, some things happened like that so it's 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 a very difficult job and i think uh, brands like ferns and petals and urban company they have done an extremely marvelous job organizing a market right educating people like you mentioned how you can preserve the flowers right yeah, yeah. it must be a very difficult journey but at the end you have made it very successful i've been a you know regular customer of phones and petal when i received this email from the team and i could relate with it that when you are a regular customer you you know connect with the brand that this is the story right what kept phones and petal relevant even after 27 years of working is that you know our innovative instinct you know um, to, to to be at par with the world or maybe ahead of the times every time so when we started our online selling of flower people didn't even know what uh, online uh, marketing or online delivery of flower is and today we are the biggest online uh, okay. you know yeah yeah yes. so that so many innovations in first we did so we always not today we are already thinking of what's going to happen in the next 5 years when which all country and how will be taking funds and petals to a new level so i guess uh, thinking uh, ahead thinking right and uh, keeping competition worried and i guess that spirit and the team and that overall uh, fnp blood group positive attitude yeah. um, uh, has made us a, a very different outfit which is unique in this country yes you are right like being a founder you have to be ahead of the time you know aapko predict karna hota hai what is going to happen in the next 2 uh, year 4 year and i think pandemic ne sabse bada example set kiya logo ke liye everything was shut and kuch logo ne band kar diya kuch logo ne aur bada bana liya and they had to think they were forced to think out of the box you know jaake uh, pivot karna hai ya kuch naya shuru karna hai because tell us about the time kab kab ye online aapne start kiya and how was the response 2000 it's 22 okay. years now it's 6 years ke baad 6 year aapne offline operate kiya and then uh, aapne yeah. online how was the response yeah we started we started with couple of you know at that point of time there two three shopping mall shopping sites like india times sefi so you know those those were the initial uh, web uh, portals which used to sell multiple things 
So initially we put our um, stuff there in, on their uh, site, you know, because uh, people will order from there and they'll pass on the order to us. It's only after one year of experiencing how the market is, what the trends are, we started our own website. That's how the journey began for uh, you now have 12 verticals, right? It's yeah. not just a, a flower shop or online flower shop, right? Yeah. And uh, because jaise abhi, abhi bhi hum log baat kar rahe hain, and when I call it a uh, flower selling business, it doesn't sound that big or profitable. What was the moment for you? Ki aapko laga ki, achha, ye ek outlet se flower, flower sell karna, ya do se, ya ten se, it will not make it that big. So what was that uh, moment when, when things changed for Ferns and Petal? See, uh, first of all, when I started Flowers, so when I was talking about my wedding, and you know, my to-be father-in-law was told that he has a flower business, he probably thought that he's selling some, you know, mandir ke bahar koi wo kool bechta hoga kinds, you know. So, so flowers were, were looked at, you know, from that perspective at that point of time. Now bringing them to those respective flower boutiques and multiplying it and being an unorganized industry. I think it was, um, it was extremely challenging. We had some very, very tough times. We have seen all the hardship a businessman can go through, whether it's depression, whether it's debt, whether it is, you know, backstabbing, whether, you know, all kinds of failures and hardships. So I always say that, you know, um, I've been to a school called Struggle, which has which graduated me to be a better businessman, better florist. And that education is helping even today. Yeah, it's been a long time. Like 1994 was the year when uh, Ferns and Petal was born. And it's the same year I was born. So, oh. <laughs> so it's been a long journey for you. I, I can uh, completely agree with you. You must have seen a lot of hardships. It, it's a very long time, right? What was the first thing you did that made it big? Like, apart from selling flowers, I think you ventured into a decoration business, I think. We ventured into, you know, a lot of lot of customers used to buy flowers from us, you know, for, for their daughter's wedding or girls for their own wedding. They wanted me to do flowers for their wedding. Whereas I had no idea how the wedding flowers are done. The mandap and all that, you know. Yeah. So I was basically selling bouquets. So they kind of insisted and they forced me to become a decorator in a way, you know. But I think that was a turning point for me because uh, doing decoration was big ticket. You know, if I sell a bouquet for 1,000 bucks, I do a wedding for maybe 50,000 bucks. Mm-hmm. So I was doing one wedding, which, which was almost equal to one month selling in the flower shop. And in wedding only, then we started getting into tenting, infrastructure, air condition hangers, and so on and so forth. So ultimately, we become wedding planners now we have wedding venues hotels so it's like a one-stop wedding solution now so wedding has been one aspect of life has been very instrumental and very important to us as a business mm-hmm. emotionally of course flowers remain our uh, flexible Departed. brand of flexible business we started five six new businesses on the way which is um, i got into filmmaking with which, which i think has a great potential you know because ott needs good content so filmmaking is one and uh, while doing wedding planning and everything, I said, let me do something about uh, funerals in this country because, you know, death is taken in a very wrong way. I think it's the finale of life. It should be celebrated if it's lived well. So we started something called Last Journey, which is funeral planning. We also have something called Baby Bless, which is, uh, you know, newborn baby or motherhood planning. We, we have a B2B solution, WDH, Wedding Design Hub, where we provide people with a turnkey solution by making pandals and wedding halls for them. Like that, we have got 12 different verticals, which are all, some of them are complementing each other, some are independent. But yes, I think we have enough on the plate to eat. Because Abhi, you just mentioned kiya that uh, uh, your customers were coming to you and they were telling you that we need you for my daughter's wedding because they trusted you, right? I think trust was something that played an important role uh, in your business. They trusted the quality of flowers you will uh, send them or decorate uh, the mandap with, right? Because it was like it was the trust factor here that helped you, you know, 
explored other options, right? No, I, I think trust was definitely something uh, very important. But I think what made me, you know, stand uh, tall was the way I did the flowers. Because normally, you know, at that point of time, flower mandaps mean that you have those genda ladies and you have somebody who chip cow flowers on, you know, on, on a particular shape of a backdrop. Very traditional, old style of doing flowers. Whereas I was doing flower mandaps and decoration with carnations and roses, which was never done. So it was the uniqueness of the design, which also played a very, very important role. Hmm. And because what's the revenue of uh, ferns and petals? I mean, if all the verticals put together, we should be close to 1,000 crore this year. Wow, Congra congratulations. How many uh, offline outlets you have at Ferns and Petals? We have got uh, 250 outlets as a firm. Wow. And uh, I think you are also present in hundred more than 120 countries. We have tie-ups in all these countries. We do not have FNP outlets in these countries, but we deliver. If you online, if you order flowers with us, they can be delivered anywhere in the world. Okay. So tell us more about it. Like how do you partner with these uh, stores who are abroad? You see, uh, I think digitally the world has become very small. So every city, every you know, um, you have some good players in different parts of the world. You tie with those players, and then uh, you channel your orders through them. And similarly, whatever orders they want to deliver in India, they deliver through us. So it's give and take. Hmm. And Lighthouse has uh, invested two hundred crore in ferns and petals. Tell us about uh, the fundraising journey uh, of Ferns and Petal, how it has worked for you. We are a very healthy uh, business. We are profitable. It, you know, we, we, it was not like any other new age startup where, you know, just for the valuation sake, you keep having first round, second round, third round. We are orthodox, orthodox traditional business people who make money every month. But yes, we had some ambitious plans for the next two years, like in terms of branding uh, for the going to newer country, you know, in terms of having grassroots operations. We wanted to acquire a couple of companies which can help us uh, increase our portfolio. So for all these further expansion, we thought if we take some kind of a help, it will uh, make the growth faster. So what's your vision for the next three years for Ferns and Petals? Lots, I think. Uh, one, I think we should be crossing 500 outlet mark. Second, uh, uh, we should be done with our IPO, which it should be happening in the next two years. Third, um, very important uh, idea or that uh, we want to be at least, you know, in 20 more countries. Because it, it's been a long journey for you being a founder. It's been 27 years, 28 years. Like, tell us about the lowest moments of your life being a founder and how you emerged, like how you overcome those uh, times. I think pandemic uh, would be one of those. Not really. I think pandemic was difficult in many ways, but as, as an individual, I've always looked at opportunities at, at difficult times. I think everything has something, you know, something to offer. It's a question of being positive and accepting and, uh, you know, making most of it. So pandemic to me has been a boon, you know, if I can say as a business, because I've been able to rediscover myself, did some great research and started some businesses and the way we built up our existing business. So I think uh, pandemic, no, it, it, it wasn't one of those moments. Yes, there was a time in 2007 when, you know, uh, everything was turning gold for me. I thought I'd become, I'm some kind of a, Superman who can do everything right, you know, I can't do anything wrong. But I started uh, a new venture called Chatak Chart, which was into, you know, taking the street chart into a boutique form and bring that hygiene factor in it, innovate in terms of variety and a lot of things. So mm -hmm. I wanted to have you know, Chatak Chart to be the next Ferns and Petals for me. Mm -hmm. Ferns and Petals was for flowers, Chatak Chart could be for chart. Mm -hmm. And that Three, four years of Chatak Chat was something, you know, I will not forget. Everything went wrong, you know, from, from hiring people to outlets. If I can tell you that, you know, those four years were like, you know, you had suicidal tendency, you want to run away from the world. You, were, you, you had debts, you had people queuing up outside, outside your house. 
you know, to recover money and things like that. So those four years were very tough and uh, it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot. I was literally on the street in 2010 when I such a, such a big chart. Then again, in, from 2011, with new Vikas out from the jail or out from the shadow or out from the problem was ready to sprint. And in 10 years, I think uh, what we have done is open book. Everybody knows what has happened to something. I completely agree. Because what do you think what went wrong with Chatak Chat? I think I bought a car before getting a driver in. Because I think, uh, you know, in my, in our business or whatever, whatever business I have done, now I make sure that I have the right person first, then I sell, then I kind of start the business. Earlier, I used to think that they start the business and get somebody to run it. Mm-hmm. In, it's so, so, so that, that, that's a lesson I've learned that you must have the driver first before you buy a car or you, you kind of, you know, get into the road. Mm-hmm. I think it's a very important lesson for, for anyone listening to this episode. And because in 2011, things changed for you. You said you shut uh, Chatak Chat. What, what happened in 2011? It made me, I think the two, three major changes which happened, you know, which was, first of all, I realized that I need to set the house in order properly once again. So I restructured the whole group hmm. in the first six months. And then I said the group must feel healthy and just to feel that they're working for the right company and company doing the right thing. So we stuck to our core competence. Flowers, weddings, flowers, weddings, flowers, weddings. And we expanded only in those two segments. I said, let's do what we know best. Let's mm-hmm. not go here and there. Mm-hmm. So we realigned our focus to the areas which was our forte. We restructured the whole working and we paid off every debt which was to be paid post Chatak Chati Su. So we had nobody to pay to. And I told my company and everybody that will always remain a debt-free company. We will not take debt in our lives. And we will not let anybody, you know, uh, tell us what to do. We'll never sell our equity. Even, even if we do, it will be strategic after beyond a, pop up, beyond a certain point. We will not have any partners because then there will be conflict of interest or maybe the ideas will... Not, not not go well together. And we started getting up at four in the morning. People used to tell me that, you know, there's a Brahm Murat and, you know, if you get up early, you have energies guiding you and all that. I said, look, let me realign and become the best person first. I have to lead by example. And everybody has good and bad habits. I realized I, I, that every bad has to be out. Every good has to be further reinforced. So I corrected myself, I realigned myself, realigned the team, put focus back on flowers and weddings. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, in three years time, we didn't know what to do with the money. We had so much. <laughs> because in 2011, things changed for you, right? You got your focus back on the core business. And 2011, it's been a long time. If you see it's 2022 uh, and it happened in 2011. What do you think uh, is that one thing or a combination of two three things that has happened, helped you being a founder to, you know, to be this focused since 2011? I started realizing that uh, EQ is more important than IQ. Any routine you followed or it's your discipline or any reading habits, resources you follow being a founder that has really helped you since 2011? First of all, I changed all my habits and my you know, daily routine, you know, which would be ideal you know, mm-hmm. as per the book. So I changed myself completely. It wasn't easy, you know, sleeping at eight in the night, getting up at four in the morning. And when the rest of the world is coming to work, mm-hmm. it's, rough, it's, it's a rough afternoon, you know. And I had to sacrifice a lot of family time, social uh, responsibilities and all that. Because I had, everything was my focus, my this thing. And, and second thing, which, which, which I realized, you know, that I need to be very alert, very sharp. Every particular thing happening around you is sending you a message, is mm-hmm. giving you some idea, mm-hmm. has some reason. Mm-hmm. You can only accept or you can only make most of it if you're alert. So I become very alert. very, mm-hmm. And when you're alert 
and you get things, then you become aware. Hmm. I was alert. I became more aware. And then I guess I had the agility and aggression to pursue it. So whenever I picked up a good idea or some good thing from anywhere, I immediately made a good, you know, mocktail out of it and had it, you know, so, so, so that, you know, I had the lovely flavor. And during this course of, you know, 15 years prior to Chatak Chat and four years of Chatak Chat, 2011, it was almost 18 years. Mm-hmm. After 18 years of going through all possible situations, Mm-hmm. I had made a checklist of 500 points, 500 points, mm-hmm. which were do's and don'ts before starting a business. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. It should be like this, it should be like this, target market, future, digital, competition, so it was my own logbook, which became my guide to start anything new. And that guide has not failed, failed me till today. I started eight new businesses after that, and all eight new businesses are profitable today. Hmm. My husband has also been an entrepreneur, and uh, it was one of the lowest point in life came. And uh, I used to tell him to motivate him that uh, you'll be very proud of this time, Siddharth. Uh, and he used to say, I, this is very frustrating, don't say this, because I'm just grinding uh, myself, you know, and, and just trying hard to get out of the situation. I think in 2011, it was a difficult time. I think the most difficult time you faced uh, in those four or five years, right? But I think uh, that time gave you clarity, helped you become a person you are now today, right? Unless you go through that grind. You can never be successful. I mean, it's inevitable. Yes, yes. It, it sounds bookish. It sounds bookish when you uh, no, no. read you, these you quotes, are. but the person who has experienced it. Let, let me tell you, every success story you follow has gone through this. Yes. If it's a first generation businessman. Second, third generation, the stories are different. Yes. It's a first generation business person he definitely had this grinding moment. Without this grinding moment, you can't get me one example, huh? which probably has worked so well. Hmm. It's part of the game. It's part of the game. If I have not experienced failure, that means I'm still not qualified as a proper businessman. Hmm. Failure is a qualification. Huh? Let's take yeah. it that way. Yes. Like hearing stories from people like you makes us believe in the success stories we hear or read on internet, right? It's been so inspiring listening to you, Vikas. Vikas, also tell me, you started uh, Ferns and Petal in year 1994 and uh, uh, you had a girlfriend that time uh, and Meeta also helped you setting up this business and being uh, one of the key person in the business, right? And abhi tak, is time bhi hum log baut respectable nahi baante aur there are people who question when couples work together, right? There have been few founders, Mama Earth founders and Ferns and Petal founders and Mom Company founders. They have set an example ki yes, uh, a couple ho ke bhi business how your equation with Meeta worked at phones, phones and Petal? What complemented each other? I think uh, two things you have to be very, very clear about. That your husband and wife at home, at work, you are two individuals. Hmm. There is no baggage of relation. There is no, nothing which has any influence of that relation in your working. Hmm. So the... So the personal life and professional life has to be dealt very differently. Mm -hmm. Secondly, don't discuss work at home. Don't discuss home at at work. Mm -hmm. And in most of the cases, we as a human being, as a habit, you know, that we end up finding out faults in the other person. Mm -hmm. But the true love is when you always look to, you are looking for good things in the other person. Hmm. If I start looking at good things in somebody, he will never be wrong for me. But if, if I start only looking at what she doesn't have or he doesn't have, then, then even moon is not perfect. So I think being positive, knowing that work, personal life, professional life should not be mixed and a positive attitude helps a lot. 
I think it it happens the other way around also. Like when you love someone, you only see good things, right, about that person. <laughs> I guess uh, I guess you are twenty seven, twenty eight, whatever. <laughs> I, I have a long way to go. Uh, but when you are fifty, you probably will have a little different view on this. Love is paramount. You see, love is paramount. Love is very very important. But in today's world, I guess it's the mutual respect which ultimately. You know, make make you a winner. How, however, how, how much you love each other, do whatever, unless you mutually respect each other for whoever you are as an individual, without commanding your wifey attitude or husbandy attitude, hmm. is where the story you know works beautifully. Wonderful! It, it's been so inspiring listening to you, Vikas. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's it's having you on the show. Thank you so much. I look forward to hearing more success stories from Constant Vitals. Thank you so much. And, and anytime. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.